Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode. Let's talk about Stephen Smith and his harsh criticism of Kawhi Leonard after the Clippers were eliminated by the Phoenix Suns in the first round of the NBA playoffs 2023. Soon after watching Stephen Smith wrongly criticize Kawhi Leonard after they were eliminated and even going to an extent of telling him to retire, I was not with it. What everyone knows is Kawhi Leonard has always had injury problems and a fit Kawhi Leonard is arguably the best player in the NBA. Kawhi Leonard is a passionate player, very passionate player. He always gives more than 100% when he plays. That's why he's a two-time champion, two-time finals MVP, and two times defensive player of the year. That's not easy to achieve. JJ Reddick criticized Stephen A. Smith for his comments. Listen to what he said, then we'll get back to our discussion. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, I mean this in the nicest way possible to both of you, but listening to each of you right now, it's very obvious that you've played zero high-level basketball, and you do not understand the requirements of doing that. And I do mean that in a nice way. Okay. Uh, you bring I'll up, respond in a no, second. No, no, hold on. You bring up Zion. Yes. I, I, I talked about this when we talked about Zion. I yeah, you brought, up, you brought up Zion. Trying to play coming off a, a hamstring injury, a serious hamstring injury, I've had to deal with it multiple times in my career. I, I popped it grade three when I was in college. There's a, there's a weeks-long mental hurdle to come back and play, to be able to just do a simple closeout. A sprained ankle is very different than a sprained knee. A sprained knee for someone who has torn a quad, quad tendon and who has torn their ACL is very different than someone playing on a hobbled ankle in the 1970s. It's a terrible analogy. I'm sorry, it's a terrible analogy. I, I want to tell a quick story real quick. Because um, I, think, I think you bring up the medical staff, all this stuff. Uh, when I played for Philly, when we would have off days, uh, every, everybody knows I, I lived in Brooklyn when I played for Philly. I commuted back and forth uh, for games and practices. But if we had an off day, I'd go up to Midtown, to the NBPA, and I'd work out there with my, my, my New York trainer. A basketball guy would meet me. A weight guy would meet me. We'd work on my body, whatever. So mm-hmm. every, there was a week where Ka- Kawhi was away from the team. It was coming out of all-star break. Mm-hmm. He was away from the Spurs, and I was up there working out. He was there. When I say this dude was so meticulous in his work trying to come back from that quad ten, I, I remember, I'll never forget it. I, I used to walking lunges mm-hmm. with yeah. like 50, 55-pound mm-hmm. dumbbells in each hand. This dude is doing slow walking lunges with 90-pound dumbbells in his hands mm-hmm. with the wrap around his mm-hmm. quad, which limits your blood flow. Mm-hmm. This guy gets after it. I, I, I understand the frustration mm-hmm. with the load management mm-hmm. issue. What we're talking about here and questioning his injury, and you say, I'm not questioning his injury. You just said we saw Paul George get hurt. We, we didn't see Kawhi get Let's give the guy some credit. He did it in game one. He went out there and battled game two. Guess what? Mm-hmm. If he could play, he would play. Mm-hmm. I want to get clarification on this worst superstar. Mm-hmm. Do you not have any empathy mm-hmm. for someone who has came back from two major leg injuries? Okay. Do you not? I do. Okay. I'm going to answer your questions. I'm just waiting for you to finish. Okay. Okay. And I, the last and by, the way, last, to, by the way, to the rundown, forget any damn question you got. After this, what he just brought up on a multitude of levels, I'm responding to this. Right. I just want so to say one other ahead. thing real Take quick. Your time. I just want to say one Take other thing time. real quick to yeah. answer the original question. Yes. Because I knew you were going to go off the rails here. Okay. And obviously I knew you would go off Absolutely. the rails here too. Mm-hmm. The idea of getting rid of them, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what the options are mm-hmm. for the Clippers if they, they were. They're not. You can't get rid of them. Especially, with, especially with Kawhi. Unless unless especially with Kawhi. I was talking about Kawhi, not Paul George. Let's keep in mind they're opening a new arena. Yes. In 24, 25, yeah. they are mm-hmm. the little brother mm-hmm. in that city. Mm-hmm. They, I don't think they can afford to go through mm-hmm. a full years-long rebuild mm-hmm. and get draft capital and build through the. I, I don't think they can afford to do that in LA. Opening that, so they got 1,160 mm-hmm. toilets. Okay, they need people to use them. Yeah. Finish. I'm done. JJ Redick was 100% correct. I totally agreed with everything he said. Kawhi Leonard was injured. There's no way he's going to play when he's injured. He played game one, they won. He played game two, it was a close game. So what I can say is the Clippers are just unlucky. Injuries is what has made it not work. And when it comes to injuries, it's in no one's control. 
anyone can get injured. What Steve Ballmer should do is he should just keep Kyle Leonard and Paul George because what other options, what better options does he have? None. I'm a strong believer that one day they'll finally win a championship. What do you think about this? Drop a comment. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Thank you.